Tuesday. Uh, this is still here. And it's probably most easily distinguished by these two black or dark stripes along its breast. Uh, it also has the brown top and then the white uh, belly. And one thing that's neat about these is they're young is for coastal. Does anyone know what that means? Uh, it's actually, as soon as they hatch, they can start running around and fend for themselves almost instantly. So a lot of, all their nests will usually be on the ground. And so if predators or something comes near the nest, then you'll see the parents kind of pretend like they have a broken wing and kind of hobble away to draw the predator away from the nest. And then they'll take off away from it. So The next is the family Hematopodidae. The American oyster catcher, which has this really long, slender, uh, hard bill, which it uses to crack open mollusk shells. Hence its name, uh, oyster catcher. But uh, it'll have a white belly and then brown back and wings and then this darker brown colored head all the way around to its neck. Day, uh, the ring billed gull, and it gets its name from this ring running around the end of its bill. So you can look at it and you'll see this dark ring that runs all the way around it. Also, uh, their back and wings are this real light gray color, and then they have a solid white belly and breast. Kind of these brownish speckles on top of their heads. that it has. Some people have even said it's heart shaped. Unfortunately this one is messed up but uh, probably one of the first things I thought of whenever I saw this. If you've seen the movie The Fourth Kind all the owls they really creepy. But, uh, <laughs> but they'll have the raptorial feet as well. Next is the family Strigidae and this is the possess zygodactyl feet, which you can see in 
this left one for some reason, but for some reason in this one it doesn't look like he has it, so I don't know what the deal is with that. But then in the order Captain Mulga for me, and like Captain Mulga Day, we changed it from uh, Chuck Will's widow to the common night talk. So N I G H T H A W K. N-I-G-H-T-H-A-W-K, Night Hawk. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's the common Night Hawk imagery, but the common in front. Like Night. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one characteristic of this order is they all have the bristles around their uh, bills. So, and they have a really tiny bill compared to the rest of their body, but if you look close enough, you can see these little black, huh. kind of stiff uh, feathers around their bill, and those are the bristles. Also, they tend to have this really elaborate pattern on their back, and that's because these birds are nocturnal. So uh, during the day, they want to be invisible to any predators that are around, so that's why they have such a, an elaborate pattern. is the order of Pondiformes, a uh, family of Potidae, and this is the chimney swift, which they're commonly referred to as flying cigars because they tend to be cylindrical in shape. If you look at one while flying, uh, they tend to be almost completely dark brown in color, and they also have this tiny little beak. And these will actually possess uh, pamperdactyl feet if you look close enough. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because they're so little. Next is the family Trachylidae, uh, and this is the ruby-throated hummingbird. Uh, like most hummingbirds, it has the uh, long, thin bill, and then it'll have a long tongue that it uses to eat nectar. Uh, sometimes hummingbirds can uh, eat insects too, but they normally don't. They're also covered in these uh, iridescent feathers, so if you look at his whole top, half of his body is covered in these uh, bright green kind of iridescent feathers, and then he gets his name from the red iridescent feathers on his throat. So if you kind of hold it in the right light, you can see uh, it kind of shimmering. Next is the order Carassiaformes, uh, family Alcidinidae, and this is the belted kingfisher, which gets its name from this band running across its breast right there. It'll also have these uh, real thick, uh, kind of long bills that it uses to eat, uh, it eats fish, so it uses them to catch them. Also, they will have syndactyl feet, so their third and fourth toes are fused together, and this is probably the best example that you can really tell of the specimens we have. But if you look underneath, you can see where the soles are kind of uh, fused and then uh, on the top as well. Next is the order of Picaformes, uh, family Picidae, and this is the downy woodpecker. And like most woodpeckers, it has uh, zygodactyl feet, and this is probably one of the easier specimens to see that on. Also, uh, they possess these really sturdy tail feathers. The wretches is really thick. Uh, if you touch them, you can feel how sturdy they are, but they use that to help prop themselves up on the trees. And then they also possess uh, kind of longer fleshy cones that they use after they knock a little hole in the wood uh, to go in and get the insects or bugs or grubs, whatever, out of the wood. I was expecting a real woodpecker. Now on to the last order. All the rest of the birds are in the order of the Uh First one is the family Tyranidae, and this is the western kingbird. And it has this uh, bright yellow colored uh, belly, and then this gray back. Also, it'll have this uh, reddish orange spot on top of its head, which you can see, and it's probably the best way to tell it apart from the others. A 
as well as its tail feathers will be dark brown with white on either side. Um, this particular one doesn't really have a, that big of a white stripe on the left side, but you can still kind of see it. Next is the family Byroom Dinidae, and this is the Purple Martin, which gets its name from these uh, kind of iridescent black colored feathers on the upper part of its body. And if you look at it, it kind of gives it a purpley sheen. Um, and members of this family have been known to make nests out of mud. I'm not sure if this particular species does, but... <coughs> And then moving on to the family Corvidae, uh, you have the green jay, which, as you can see, it has a lot of green on its back. And then its belly will be either yellow or green. This one tends to be more green. It will have this uh, black throat and then bright blue on top of its head. And, it's, uh, and all members of this family have bristles over their nostrils. So this particular specimen, you can see it really easily since they're bright blue. Uh, now these, you don't normally see too often in Texas. Um, they're kind of rare. They tend to be further south down into uh, Mexico. So we added another specimen that you see more commonly in the family Corvidae, and this is the blue jay. So you can just write it in under uh, green jay. You can just write blue jay. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with them. They have uh, the blue on their back all the way down their tail feathers. And then they also possess this uh, black colored U-shaped collar on the rumble. And they'll have the bristles as well covering their nostrils, and theirs are uh, white. Next is the family Faraday, and this is the Carolina Chickadee. And he's probably most easily distinguished by... Uh, the coloration of his head, which is black on top and then black underneath, with these two white uh, stripes going on either side on its cheek. Uh, other than that, this specimen is pretty ruffled up, uh, so you can't really distinguish anything else about it, but it also has a short little pop body, so I would focus mainly on the head on this specimen. Next, you have uh, the family Triglodidex, and this is the Carolina Wren. And uh, these birds will have kind of a longer, slightly curved bill. Uh, they eat, they're pretty well insectivorous, they eat only insects. Uh, they also have this solid brown color on their back and their wings, which they, they kind of blend in when they're on the ground, hop around leaves and stuff looking for insects. Next is the family Turtidae, and this is the American Robin, which mm -hmm. most people will recognize because of its uh, red breast, and that's probably the easiest way to distinguish it. Uh, it also has a slightly shorter yellow bill, and then uh, gray brown colored back. Next is the family Mimidae, and this is the northern mockingbird. State of Texas and I think about three other states as well. Uh, they're called a mockingbird because they tend to uh, mock different sounds they hear. They try and increase the repertoire in order to attract mates. And a lot of times on campus, especially near the parking garages, you can hear them mimicking car alarms repeatedly. Uh, they're actually kind of funny every couple seconds they change. But um, they're also really aggressive, so if you happen to get near their nest, they will attack you. They'll take anything bigger than them, they don't care. And uh, they will also have syndactyl feet. So if you look, the third and fourth toes are fused together at the base. And they're a little bit harder to see than the kingfisher. Next is the family Peruidae, uh, the yellow rump warbler. Also called by some people butterbutt because it has these bright yellow feathers right here, uh, right before their tail feathers, which is probably the easiest way to identify it. It also has uh, these yellow feathers right on top of its head, and then sometimes it'll have kind of a yellowish colored feathers on their uh, 
press as well, but it's not as easily seen. So, just look for the yellow down by the pill feathers. Is it okay if we put butter blood instead of... No. You have to put the actual... Because they, the birds, they use the common names, kind of as the scientific names. They're yeah. officially called something, so... Then you have the family Icaridae, and this is the brown-headed cowbird, uh, and this is a male, which luckily you have, because then you can see why it's called brown-headed cowbird, but almost its entire body is covered in black iridescent feathers, and then they have this brown colored head, this plain brown uh, feathered head. I think the females are mostly just all brown, and they also have a really sharply pointed beak, so if you... Uh, touch it, it comes to a lot finer point than the rest of the specimens. Next is the family in Berizidae, uh, the white-throated sparrow, which it gets its name from having this uh, these white feathers on its throat, but you really, I mean, it, it's kind of messed up right there. But an easier way for me to identify them, if you look on top of the head, they can have these two darker uh, colored stripes. And then this one lighter color right in the middle. And then they'll have uh, yellow feathers on either side right behind their bill by their eyes. And they'll have a conical shaped beak which they use for eating seeds. Next is the family Cardinalidae and this is the Indigo Bunny. See, it gets its name from this bright, vibrant blue color. Uh, and this is actually a male from the summer months. During the winter months, it loses the blue and goes strictly to brown. Uh, and it also has a conical beak, too, which it uses for eating tea. And then lastly, you have the family Bombycela day. And this is the cedar waxwing. Uh, they tend to have this olive or yellow colored uh, feathers around their center area. Also, they have yellow tipped uh, tail feathers. In addition to the tips of their wing feathers having these, uh, they can either be red, orange, or yellow colored, depending on what they eat, these little tiny projections <coughs> off the end of them. And that's where they get their name from. In this particular specimen, they're like uh, reddish orange. They just, they really don't even look like 